Okay, hi there, welcome back. Uh, in this diagram video, we're going to look at the impact of a, a price cap on a monopoly. So without any form of direct intervention by government, a monopoly, market power business, can put their prices above the competitive equilibrium and keep them high. And now this leads to allocative inefficiency because price is well above marginal cost and can also lead to a decline in consumer welfare. So in some cases, the regulator of an industry might decide to impose a price cap uh, and that limits the price that a monopoly can charge. To be effective, a price cap needs to be set below the normal profit maximising price for a monopolist, or the usual profit maximising price, I guess, would be a better word to use. So here's our diagram. If you followed me from the previous video on monopoly, here's our diagram showing profit maximisation but without a price cap. And a monopoly can charge price P1. The profit maximising output is Q1. And they make a really good profit there, shown by the shaded area. So with the price cap, the regulator is saying, no, you can't charge P1. We're going to limit you. We're going to cap you. The price you can charge now is P2. And to be effective, of course, the price cap needs to be below where the price would normally be. Uh, I've got a special video looking at the advantages for and against price capping. And I do refer you to that if you want a longer explanation, analysis and evaluation of the economics of a price cap. It's a really good revision resource. This diagram video just takes you through what happens. If you put the price cap at P2, that means that the firm can't charge P1 anymore, so they'll probably charge P2. Let's bring the price down to this point here. That means there's an expansion down the demand curve because now the product is a little cheaper. So output will expand from Q1 to Q2. Hopefully everybody's okay with that. Uh, can the firm still make a profit at that price and output? Well, the answer is yes. At Q2, there's the unit cost, C2, I've drawn across. So they're charging P2 and the unit cost is C2, so therefore the profit is this area there, the green area. So let's go back a slide. The orange area was the previous profit. The green area is the new profit. And I think we can see that the profit has come down because the firm is now capped in terms of what it can charge. So that would be a you know, reasonably good price cap diagram to draw for the exam. Capping the price leads to an expansion of demand and an increase in consumer surplus, but the level of monopoly supernormal profit is lower. So on the one hand, capped prices can improve allocative efficiency, allocative efficiency, sorry, but uh, lower profits might limit how much a firm can afford to spend on investment and research, which might have consequences for dynamic efficiency in the market. Just taking this one stage further, so this is the cap, P2, you might want to introduce consumer surplus into your evaluation. So before the price cap, at price P1, consumer surplus was area A, B, P1. But after the price cap, consumer surplus increases to A, C, P2, A, C, P2. So that would be a really good way of just building the analysis and saying, well, a price cap has consequences for profit of producers, but it also has potential consequences for the welfare of consumers. That lower price brings more people into the market. It increases the effective demand. So there's your price cap diagram with consumer service included. And you might want to take a screenshot for your revision notes. There we go. That was a quick look at monopoly profit with a price cap. Stay happy, stay curious. See you soon.